Hello everyone and welcome to Faber Book Time. My name's Chris Mould and I illustrated The Iron Man and here he is. Let's have a look at the book, have a look at the story and do some drawing. I always love the beginning of the Iron Man story just because it goes straight into the action, there's no messing about and I think that's one of the things that made me hang on to the book when I was younger when I found it in the school library. The Iron Man came to the top of the cliff. How far had he walked? Nobody knows. Where had he come from? Nobody knows. How was he made? Nobody knows. Taller than a house, the Iron Man stood at the top of the cliff on the very brink in the darkness. The wind sang through his iron fingers. His great iron head, shaped like a dustbin but as big as a bedroom, slowly turned to the right, slowly turned to the left. His iron ears turned this way, that way. He was hearing the sea. His eyes, like headlamps, glowed white, then red, then infrared, searching the sea. Never before had the Iron Man seen the sea. So when I was younger, I used to love drawing, but no one ever explained to me that I could be an illustrator when I was older. So I like to pass that on. Let's do some drawing together and you can have a think about that as well. We start with a head, which is basically a square. And then we curve the top over like this. And then we put rectangles on the side for the ears. A little curve under there. Shoulders out to the left, shoulders out to the right. Turn that into a box. Like so. Put this arched, curved, whatever you want to call it, shape in here. Like so. And then as we come down to the waist, we come in a bit from here. Create a rectangle there. Do the same again here. Like so until you've got that shape. And then we'll attach the arms here and here. And we'll attach the legs here and here. And we put this shape in first on this side that goes like this. Same on the other side, Just like this. First part of the leg there. Same on both sides. Knee joint there, put the circle in. Lower part of the leg is going to stop there, and lower part of the right leg is slightly longer so that we can show the hill that he's walking over so that it passes in front of that leg, like so, behind this leg, like this. So far, so good. Back to the arms. From here down to the elbow, just going to put about there. Again, put the circle on for the joint. Same on this side. Lower part of the arm that falls just above the knee. Big long arms. Again, same on both sides. Attach the hands here. A curved square I use to put the hand shape in. Just takes the harshness off, off the edge of the square uh, and softens the shape slightly. And then we attach the thumb on this side, like this. Uh, 
and great big long fingers on each side like so. So there's the basic shape of your Iron Man. Go back to the head. Put the eyes in either side. Put that rectangle in the middle. Split the bottom in half for the mouth. And then you can look at breaking all these other shapes up so we can create sections, panels, use curved areas, use lines across, use lines down. Doesn't really matter how you break the space up. Just add the detail until you've got something inside of that shape. It gives you lots more information and helps him look a bit more convincing. So again, just break the shape up. Doesn't matter how. Curved lines, lines across, lines down. You can always use also small circles like this to create rivets. Makes him look a little bit more robot-like. Just do that everywhere. And again, just break the space up however you want. We put a circle here, break that section up. Another circle here, a line here edge to this section here and suddenly all that information helps to make him look a little bit more convincing as the Iron Man. And in this middle section here we have all his workings, so cogs, that we use circles to create pumps and valves and all sorts of things and we can just use rectangles, straight lines more fluid lines for things like pipes and pistons and all sorts don't worry too much about how he actually works just put the information in there, just keep adding the detail don't, don't worry too much about what it is And then suddenly you'll find you've got all these little vacant spaces here, here, here. Just go in there and add more. Circle in a circle, circle in a square, triangle, triangle, small lever, whatever you do um, to fill that space. Just break the space up and add information. Make it look like detail. Again, you don't have to worry about quite what it is, just fill the space. So you've probably noticed I've left this side blank so far. That's because as I go along when I'm drawing, I'm always thinking about where the light's coming from. So if we, if we create on this side, doesn't matter if you've already put some detail on here, that doesn't matter, you can still uh, go over it or leave parts of it exposed, but I'm going to add a strong shaded solid area that will just lift him off the page and make him look that little bit more dramatic. And it just takes a little bit of while, uh, time to fill that space out but it is actually worth doing it because you get quite a good strong dramatic effect from uh, from doing that so do take the time to do it and come down this uh, side with that solid shaded area so here we are I've completely gone down that side with that dark shaded area just adding a little bit more uh, across this side just to make sure there's enough weight in the whole drawing just a little bit on on the underside of um, these parts here just so he, he, he matches up and the whole thing makes sense so hopefully now you feel inspired 
to do an Iron Man drawing yourself, or maybe you'll go off and draw something different. Or maybe you'll just go off and read an adventure story. But whatever you do, hopefully you felt inspired and you can fill your time with something fun. Good luck. <laughs>